do we tend to follow our insecurities, fears, and dark feelings rather than our spiritual feelings? Simply because they're louder and they tend to come faster. You know, we, we give ourselves a really hard time because it's true. Most of us do tend to make decisions in favor of our ego, our fear, our insecurities, our desires, those temporary fleeting ones rather than the deep lasting ones. And then we look back and we think, well, why did I do that? Why do I keep making decisions based on that which is so fleeting, that which is so superficial? Especially when I'm a spiritual person and on a spiritual path. And the reason is actually just very simple. Those voices tend to be much louder. You know, it's the same tragedy of how the kids who act out in classrooms are the ones who get all the attention from the teachers, right? Anyone, anyone who's a teacher or a parent knows that this is one of the tragedies of our classrooms. The kids who are doing great, the kids who do their homework, who pay attention, who sit still, who are eager to learn, tend to be the ones who get much less of the teacher's time and energy. Most of it goes to shushing the ones who are making noise, dragging the ones who have jumped out of their chairs back into their chairs, scolding and reprimanding those who are talking out of turn, simply because that's what attracts our attention. And it's the same thing with all the different voices and personalities in our own heads. Those that are loud, those that don't let go, tend to be what gets our attention. But this is, this is where our spiritual practice connects us and attunes us to the spiritual voices so that we learn to listen to those. So that like, like a good teacher, we learn how to pay just as much attention to the children who are doing their homework, who do want to be in class, who are behaving themselves as to those who aren't. so hard to be young. <laughs> um, and this is why, this is why we meditate, it's why we pray, it's why we have practices of contemplation and introspection, because what it does is, it makes those voices, those spiritual voices, those spiritual feelings, it makes them a little bit louder. It allows us to recognize them a little bit more. Allows us to get more and more familiar with them. So that when we're trying to make decisions or when we're just moving through our life, those voices, those feelings, those instincts become just as loud. Also, the other part of this is as we speak almost every night about the power of sanskaras, the power of habit, the power of neuronal networks, that which we give attention to gets louder. Every time I make a decision based on a fear, the voice of my fear gets louder. Every time I make a decision based on impulse, the power of my impulse gets louder. And similarly, every time I don't listen to the voice of fear, to the voice of impulse, to the voice of ego or anger, but instead, I take a moment, I quiet myself, I go within, I listen to my breath, I connect with my breath, 
And I allow the real voice from within to speak. I don't allow the ego to convince me that everything is an emergency. The ego functions on creating a situation in which we don't have time to connect. If the ego can just keep us frenetic enough, worried enough, anxious enough, grabbing enough, competing enough, feeling unwhole enough, living in this myth of scarcity enough. You know, it's how we sell things. One day left. Two tickets left. Better buy it now, right? You were just barely contemplating the idea of, you know, a trip to London. You go online. You think, all right, let's see. How much might it cost us? And suddenly, as you're looking at prices, things start flashing. You know, 491 other people are looking at this, this fair right now. Two tickets left. Well, God, not better get it. Long before you've even asked your boss, can I take the time off? Long before you've asked your spouse or traveling partner whether they can get the time off or whether they are even interested in going to London. Long before you've done anything that requires taking a deep breath, connecting, Long before any of that, you've purchased the ticket because this is it's how marketing works. The myth of scarcity. Okay. We live in a free market, democratic, capitalist society. There's not a lot we can do about those websites. But we can prevent our own mind from doing the same thing. Certainly, we have jurisdiction over what we listen to in our own mind and what it says. But our own mind does the same thing. Whether it's the raise, whether it's the promotion, whether it's the husband or the wife, or the happiness or the success. Because we live in that myth of scarcity, we unconsciously begrudge others happiness. Simply because on a deep level it convinces us that there's less in the pie now for us to get. And this is what the mind does. Oh my God, she got married, he got married, they got, he got a good job, she got a good job, he bought a car, they went on vacation. There's less now somehow in this global you know, pot of happiness. Which of course is ridiculous when we think about it. But in order to think about it, I have to actually stop and take a breath and be still enough, which most of us aren't. And so this is where we act based on those. They're loud, they're fast, they function on, you know, emergency. But we have the power. And every, every moment that you spend, whether it's meditating, whether it's praying, whether it's practicing, any kind of active conscious working with your thoughts, redirection of your thoughts, introspection of your thoughts, you're retraining your own mind. And you're retraining your mind to take a different path, a different direction. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody who's ever moved homes or moved jobs or offices knows there's a while for the first few days or weeks that you find yourself accidentally halfway to your old office or halfway to your old house before you realize, oh, wait, I don't live there anymore. Oh, wait, that's not my office anymore. We moved. It's because how to get there was this subconscious program. Takes a while. You'll build a new program. After a few weeks, you'll no longer find yourself accidentally at your old house or office. But it takes a while of laying that new pattern. And it's the same thing with any thought. It's going to take a while. In the beginning, you're going to keep going in the same way. 
you'll be halfway to ego or desire or fear or scarcity, competition. But then you'll catch yourself and you'll say, oh, wait, I don't live there anymore. Oh, wait, that's not how I think anymore. Oh, wait, I'm on a different path now. And then you'll redirect yourself. And slowly, 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 you'll find that that will become the new default path. But it takes just a bit of time to relay those new patterns, those new directions, those new subconscious ways of moving. But you can do it. And it doesn't take that long.